Okay, for the i700 wireless that uses batteries, you have to know that uh, your scanner comes with three batteries included. They can be operated at around one hour. So uh, it should last, one battery should last to, uh, to, um, for one hour of use. Uh, mostly uh, you should scan two or three cases with one batteries. Uh, standby mode is eight hours per battery and you need to charge it for at least 2.5 to 3 hours to get a full charge out of them. Uh, my work protocol is to uh, use the battery and um, when I see that I'm going to 20, as I mentioned before, I'm going to replace the battery. When I already uh, used the second battery in my pack, I have to go and plug them in to get them charged because the last battery could uh, be drained in one hour and uh, the other two ones need to be charged for 2.1 to 3 hours. So even sometimes, I, if I know I uh, I have a full day of scanning. If I use a battery, I already put it to charge back in the, in the cradle. If by any reason you have forgotten to charge your batteries, do not worry, because the box in uh, that you find the i700 wireless contains a wired cabled battery. It's a replacement, and if you plug that into the scanner. It's just going to uh, use the scanner connected to the socket and it's not going to be any problem to scan, even if you don't have the batteries at the ready. Uh, that bad plugged-in battery is not a replacement and not a wired connection to the scanner. It just gives juice to the scanner, so you still will have to uh, be able to uh, connect to the base and the base is still needed. As you see, the charger symbols are displayed, uh, displayed below and you also know, as I mentioned before, how much uh, juice you have left in your batteries, so take that into account. Before doing your first scan, your scanner needs to be calibrated. Um, the good part about calibration is that once done, you have uh, the information done by the calibration inside the scanner and not the laptop. So once you have calibrated the device, you will be able to use it uh, on any laptop. You don't need to calibrate for the, every laptop or desktop that you are using. But with that said, calibration is very, very important to get consistent results and get a very precise scan. What I commonly do is calibrate my device every two weeks. As you can see in the, in the protocol, by placing the calibrating tool uh, instead of the scanning tip on the scanner, the calibration wizard starts automatically. You're going to go to all the steps from uh, and uh, the calibration wizard is very simple. You're going to go to all the steps and to all positions from one to the last. And afterwards, the, uh, the scanner and the software together will uh, calculate the values and give the calibration file uh, that is going to be auto stored on the scanner. So no need to worry, you don't need to do anything, just go to the steps of the wizard. But with that said, uh, I calibrate my scanner every two, week, two weeks and also anytime I do something uh, uh, of a bigger case, of a case that needs to have very good precision, so full large cases, I always calibrate before uh, anything that is more than two implants for, from three implants and up, I always calibrate before doing the impressions and uh, also you are going to get a pop-up message sometimes uh, telling you that the scanner is not warm enough. This is very important because uh, physical objects have dimensions varying uh, by their temperatures. Let the scanner heat accordingly before using it for calibration but also for general use. Never start scanning if the scanner is not warm enough. Let it, let it do its thing and only after everything is warm enough and it's going to tell you that it's, this is done, only then can you start scanning. Also, as I mentioned in the previous slide, uh, this is what you are going to see on the left is uh, the temperature and the heating, the needed heating for the scanner when the gauge is to the right, everything is done and then you are going to start from the position one and to the last and then the calibration wizard is going to tell you that the calibration is a pass. Now before starting to use the scanner, you're actually going to need to remove the lid of the scanner and place a tip. And as you can see on the right, tips uh, can be used um, with uh, uh, mirror facing down or up. 
as uh, you want to, they have a 180 degrees reversible tips. This uh, you should remember because it helps you when scanning the upper or lower arch. And um, when you get tips, uh, the first thing you do is going to, you're going to uh, sterilize these tips before using in patients. And what I do in these regards, I use uh, the proper uh, solutions described by Medic. And after I uh, wipe this clean, uh, these tips clean, I'm gonna dry them with uh, sterile gorges and also place a sterile pellet inside the tip after I wipe the mirror clean because when placing these tips in pouches, in sterilization pouches, uh, they can get uh, little stains on them and that stains are going to be a problem when scanning them because they can induce errors or um, they are going to stop the, the scanning process. So. Uh, you are going to receive tips in the I-600 uh, that are around uh, 100 sterilizations possible and in the I-700 and 700 wireless they can be sterilized 150 times and um, you can see here below how they can be sterilized with uh, gravity types or pre-vacuum types autoclaves or uh, um, at uh, 121 degrees or 134 degrees and how much time you need. So please do respect these uh, specifications for proper sterilization. Uh, do not overuse tips because if a tip is too scratched or too uh, stained, the scanning is going to be impacted and you are going to um, have errors in your scans. Now, after you have finished uh, scanning a patient, as uh, you can see on the left picture, uh, your unit, if it's I-700 or an I-700 wireless, has a sterilizing uh, light inside of it. And you can see the symbol on, the, on uh, your scanner light up. You can set the amount of time that you want the scanner to sterilize itself on the inner part uh, in settings. But also, once this process starts, my recommendation to you is not turn the scanner off, just leave it uh, to sterilize its inner part because uh, this is how you get uh, proper experience for the next patient. What happens is that the scanner has a fan inside that blows air through the scanner from the posterior part to the anterior to cool it off. And because aerosols are present uh, in your operating room, uh, it's going to um, go uh, to have these aerosols go to the scanners and they might infect the inner part of the scanner and uh, these uh, this little uh, droplets can then be, uh, you know, ex be expunged to the next patient. So for this not to happen, the inside of the scanner is going to be sterilized by UV means. But this is only uh, happening if you let the scanner on after scanning and after that UV LED is going to uh, disconnect. Now you know that uh, the whole UV process is finalized. Also, as you can see on the right, the process of disinfecting the scanner by itself is done by spraying sterilization agent on a, a dry cloth and wiping the scanner off, but never ever use a sterilizing agent sprayed directly on the scanner because it can get inside and it can damage your device. So always spray the sterilizing agent on a cloth or, or on a piece of paper and just then wipe the scanner off.